This man is quadriplegic, he cannot move his legs or arms, and yet he is controlling a full exoskeleton, all four limbs, with his own mind. Amazing, right? But what are the challenges in making paralyzed people move again? Hey everybody, welcome back to another video from The Dairy Monkey and today I wanted to talk about exoskeletons for quadriplegics. Now, in a previous video I talked about exoskeletons for different applications, including exoskeletons for paraplegics, but this time I wanted to focus more on a specific application for quadriplegics and in particular on the biomechanical challenges that we have to face and we have to overcome in order to develop these devices. Now, to start off, what is quadriplegia? Quadriplegia is a condition in which the person affected has lost partially or totally control over his or her own limbs. So, we're talking about legs and arms. Usually, people affected by quadriplegia cannot control their legs and they have limited control over arms. Sometimes, total loss of control. And it is often due to spinal cord injuries, for example, during accidents. Now, to interact with the surrounding environment, quadriplegics have to resort to different strategies and solutions depending on the amount of control that they have retained over their own arms and hands. If a control is partial, then they can use specific grippers that allow manipulation of different objects and that allow also these people to perform also complex tasks like driving. But if a loss of control is total, then these people can only use their heads, they can only move their heads, so they have to resort to using their mouths, their chins or their tongues to control specific sticks, for example, to move a wheelchair. And in case they have to use devices like computers, they can use, for example, solutions like eye tracking or voice recognition technologies, similar to what adopted for ALS patients. Our favorites but this is clearly not enough and we would like for these people to be able to move again, to move again their arms and their legs and to be able to interact like healthy people with the surrounding environment. So for this reason we have to refer to exoskeletons. Exoskeletons are powered wearable machines that can allow or support limb movements thanks to different motors. So they can, for example, support a person that is lifting a heavy weight, like in the case of exoskeletons used for industrial applications, but for paralyzed people they can allow limb movements when it's not possible. Exoskeletons are already in commerce for paraplegics, for example, like the exoskeleton rework that we're seeing in this video, but of course the next step will be to use this technology, these exoskeletons, also for people who are quadriplegic. And a famous case was highlighted in a 2019 study by the University of Grenoble and the research center Kleinotech. This study lasted for two years and it has achieved something that has never been done before, which is to develop an exoskeleton controlled all four limbs with a brain-computer interface. Now, the brain-computer interface was an invasive one, so it was a brain-computer interface directly implanted in the brain in the motor cortex of this patient with 64 electrodes that were capturing all the information from the brain, they were sensing the signals coming from the motor cortex, so this person was actually trained during these years to perform several tasks by thinking about movement, so these thoughts were actually transduced into control for the motors. So this person was able to move this very bulky and actually complex exoskeleton, we're talking about an exoskeleton with 14 joints, 14 degrees of freedom, which was pretty heavy, about 65 kilograms. So seeing the results, seeing this person move again with his exoskeleton, a person with his, with his quadriplegic is amazing per se, but can we do even better? In fact, even more recently, there have been studies highlighting the potential for brain-computer interfaces to move robotic arms. For example, in late 2020, a study from John Hopkins University showed amazing results with arms controlled by a brain-computer interface. A patient was able to feed himself dessert with his mind-controlled robotic arms. But brain-computer interfaces are not the only challenge, so we we're not just focusing on how to control these devices, although the issues per se is 
very complex because of course taking the information from the brain and transducing this information into control is an already incredibly complex task on its own. But an additional task, an additional challenge that we have to face is the one regarding balance. If you notice in the video of the quadriplegic person and his exoskeleton, you will notice that in fact there is a silly mounted harness that is keeping the exoskeleton in place. So this exoskeleton is not a fully autonomous system. Compared to system, for example, for paraplegic, we see the difference. So the exoskeletons for paraplegics allow these people to move autonomously but still these people they require crutches they require crutches to maintain their balance in fact when it comes to activities like walking but even just standing still it's not just about the legs it's not about the muscles of the legs but also about the core muscles the core muscles like the abs the obliques the back muscles and other muscles that are required and are constantly active when we're standing up so in the case of people that are affected by paraplegia or tetraplegia these people have limited or no control over these muscles so it is obviously very difficult for these people to keep balance and this is a very complex challenge that future exoskeletons for quadriplegics will have to face and in fact there are people that are actually asking a very serious question and it is is this all necessary? For example, there is a professor, an English professor, Tom Shakespeare, who is asking a very important question. It is, is, this, is it necessary to focus, to focus our research efforts on these exoskeletons? Tom Shakespeare works on disability and he points out how, for example, not many people have access to devices like wheelchairs. In fact, only 15% of the world's population of disabled people have access to wheelchairs, so in case these exoskeletons would be developed, even less, percent, less percentage of the world's population would have access to these devices, which would be probably very costly. Tom Shakespeare, in fact, points out a very important thing, which is that we should not only focus on fixing the patient, let's say, so allowing the patient to walk, but we should also focus our efforts on fixing the environment, on making the environment surrounding these people more assistive and better suited for their needs. So a very important word of caution from this professor, but we still hope for these people to be able to walk again in the future. So let me know what you think about in the comments and also if you want to learn more about exoskeletons check out the other video that I made, I will put you in the video in the description and in the comments and if you want to see more about these videos I will suggest you subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.